In a recent episode, we explored the factors that affect the adoption of innovations, but perhaps there are more. It's important for us as enablers of change to be continually thinking about these as they are so important to our work. We started with Roger's five attributes, relative advantage, compatibility, complexibility, trialability, and observability, but added to this using some recent Australian research from Jeff Keeney and co from 2017. They used 22 factors to model how farmers adopt new agricultural practices. While we think these are extremely useful, we think there is another set of factors affecting adoption that are useful to highlight those related to the social nature of change in farming. Back in 2004, Frank Van Clay published an insightful paper, Social Principles for Agricultural Extension to Assist in the Promotion of Natural Resource Management. We've put a link to the paper in the show notes um, so you can read it at your leisure. Frank has been a researcher in this field for many years. He's from Queensland originally and did his master's at the University of Queensland on social research methods and statistics for the social sciences. He then went on and completed a PhD at Wageningen University in the Netherlands in rural and environmental sociology. If you've been involved in APEN, you might recall the 2003 National Forum in Hobart. Frank was the convener for that event. He's now a professor of cultural geography at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. So you can see he's been interested in understanding change for a long time. Ah, I remember that event well, Denise. And obviously it influenced me greatly as I now live in Hobart. When we think about factors affecting adoption, we do tend to have a bias towards the technical and economic factors. So it's important that we explore the social nature of change and farming. In Frank's paper, he outlined 27 social principles that affect adoption, particularly when considering natural resource management. Now, we aren't going to go through all 27 principles with you, but we are going to highlight key ones, encourage you to have a read of the paper, as we think it's an essential one to have in our Enablers of Change toolbox. The first one is that farming is a socio-cultural practice. It's fancy words, John, but what it's saying is that habits, traditions, and beliefs affect farming just as much as technical ones, like the social, the soil types, sorry, climate, farm size, etc. Social processes impact adoption, and we need to be aware of this. That's so important, Denise. And the second is that all farmers are not the same. Now, this seems pretty obvious, but we've been involved in a number of projects and discussions about what affects adoption. And we know it's all too easy to slip into thinking about farmers as a homogenous group. We know that some are old, some are young, there's ones with more money and ones with less, ones with lots of farming experience and ones that are just starting out. There's farmers who happily use a range of chemicals and there are those who are actively trying to avoid using any chemicals. We need to recognize that there's different priorities, understanding, values and ways of working. And all these have an impact on the adoption of innovations. It's so true, John. The third principle is that adoption is a social process. A farmer is not in a vacuum. They discuss ideas with their family, friends, neighbors, advisors, and often come up with better ideas than researchers or extension people. The fourth principle is that profit is not the main driver for farmers meaning economic incentives by themselves aren't usually sufficient to bring about change. This doesn't mean the farmers don't want to make money or don't need to make money, they do. But like all of us, sometimes extra time, lower risk or lifestyle might be more important than money. So that's the first four principles, John. <laughs> These are important factors that affect adoption. And we thought it was worth highlighting a few others that we think often get overlooked. So one we thought was important to remember is principle 14, which says that farmers' attitudes are not the problem. Frank points out that farmers are not antagonistic to the environment, but just the opposite, in fact. 
However, they do have quite different views on what environmental management means, how to implement it, and concerns about whether what is being promoted is sustainable or profitable. The problem is often a difference in perception of what is considered good farm management. Another principle we think is important is number 17. Farmers have legitimate reasons for non-adoption. Frank lists 12 reasons for non-adoption, including complexity, inability to divide it into manageable parts, and conflicting information. You'll recognize several of these from the previous episode where we discussed Roger's five attributes which affect the rate of adoption. These are all good reasons not to adopt something. So true, John. <laughs> Another principle we thought was important is number 24, which states that the best method of extension is multiple methods. <laughs> Sometimes we like to think there will be a silver bullet to save the day, such as, well, just run this field day and it will fix the problem. If only it was life it was so simple. Um, in reality, we need to use multiple methods of extension to deliver the message to our diverse group of farmers. We also need to reinforce the message in different ways. So Denise, the final principle is number 27, that farmers need to feel valued. They're no different from us. We all like to feel valued. Most farmers have been battling the elements for years and working long hours to put food on our tables. Let's not just take them for granted and ask them to make yet another small change to the way they run their farming businesses. We hope this episode has helped you think a bit more about the social aspects of our work as enablers of change. We think it adds to our previous discussions about what factors affect adoption. But you've heard our thoughts, now we'd like to hear yours. Add a comment below the blog post and tell us about your experiences with these social aspects, including any tips or, and further ideas. We don't want this just to be a one-way conversation, so please join in by sharing your thoughts and ideas with us. Thanks, folks, for joining us on this Enablers of Change episode. Remember to subscribe to our newsletter if you'd like to know when new episodes are available. And hey, if you liked what you heard, please tell your friends so they too can join the conversation. All the best until we meet again. <laughs>